We're at the point with the 70 Super Beast that we need to get a good used four speed transmission ready to go in it. Here's the car. You may have seen it in some of our earlier videos. But um, here's the original transmission for the car. It's not usable right now, it needs to be rebuilt. We're going to show why. Have this good used Hemi four speed sitting around, and that is good. But this will ap apply to like your Muncie T10, pro probably your Ford top loader. They're probably all similar designs. But what we found out with this, I was just going to put new seals and gaskets in it and put it in the car. But the counter shaft has a whole bunch of play. So I have this special dial, in dial test indicator right here, right there. If you look at it closely, it's marked off in one thousandths increments. And a full sweep is 30 thousandths. So zero to 15 at the bottom and then back to zero. So what we found out when we went to uh, inspect it, and I have this pry bar, so I'm gonna move the counter shaft and see how much play it has. Okay, so if it goes a full sweep, that's 30 thousandths. You see it went a full sweep and about three thousandths more. So we got 33 thousandths of end play on the counter shaft. Go to the Dodge manual right here. This is a really good book. It's a copy of the original. And for the A833, tolerances, counter shaft, gear, end play, 15 to 29 thou. Okay, that's on the four speed. If you have a three speed, <clears throat> excuse me, um, right here, tolerances, counter shaft gear end play, five to 22 thousandths. Not that that, that applies to this transmission, but <clears throat> if you're working on like a Muncie or something like that, you need to look up the factory specs. So check this out. This is a special dial indicator. Most mechanics don't have it. I didn't have it, bought especially for this job. Pull it out and take a look. Okay. So, um, see a close up of the face and the dial. Let me take it out of here. That thing goes like that. This particular one does two full sweeps and a little bit more. So it'll measure about 67, 70 thousand, something like that. Um, but that counter shaft is out of spec. Check this out when it moves. That's how we found out something was going on. Now we already had this typical dial indicator, which most people have, or a lot of people have, for doing like ring gear backlash and stuff like that, plunger type. Problem with that is there's really no way to set it up against your counter shaft to see what your actual actual play is. I thought it was gonna be like 80,000 to be, to be honest. Only came out at like I actually tested 37 when I had that thing set up better. It's pretty tricky to set up. So anyway, let's get into some more details about what the problems that we found and how this transmission is good and usable. So the counter shaft in play on that tests out at 27. And like the book just said, up to 29 is usable. So I know it's a little loose, but that's what I'm going to do. So, um, couple other other things that we found Ron on this particular tranny which is out of a 69 GTX there's the VIN number if anybody knows who has that car still but I think it was probably junked a long time ago so that transmission there's quite a bit of wear in the shift forks right here see that that groove right there so I had these good used ones sitting around I'm going to put those back in the cover. We got new O-rings on here. 
That's how your cover is sealed. O rings on the shaft, those are new. But we're basically going to replace all the seals that we can. The only ones that you can't replace without basically doing a full rebuild is your tail housing gasket there. You can't take this out. That's your reverse uh, what, like um, detent. So you got a spring and a ball down there. If you take this out, it's going to fall in the transmission and you have to take the tranny fully apart at that point. So um, we're going to do the front seal. Like you can see right here. In fact, let's check the condition on that because it seems like it's pretty hardened. Let's see if it breaks. Yep. Thing broke right apart. We're going to put a new front seal on that. These bolts are special in that there's kind of an O-ring groove built into it. See that on the sealing surface down here. That little, uh, that thing's going to seal up against there without having to use any type of gasket or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, so we'll get this transmission running, put a new seal in it. Had this piece of pipe laying around to drive that in. That worked good. Um, the speedometer gears between the two is different because the Super B has 410 gears, so... This transmission had this white gear, which is more teeth than the red gear that came out of this tranny. So that must have been an A33 track pack car with 355 gears. So I'll just swap those out. And um, another thing you don't have to do, like a lot of people probably just replace the backup switch, assuming it's bad if it doesn't. Uh, you know, if your backup lights don't go on or if you test it with an ohm meter. So we have this ohm meter right here. <clears throat> Check this out, man. All right, so we'll shift it into reverse. This will make a noise and the dial will come on, indicating you have ohms and a good continuity through the switch. Put it in reverse. It kind of wants to kick on. But look, if you press the, the, the button right here, kind of wants to work. But you know what? The new one was no better. I think what I can do is actually, I think that maybe I double gasketed it or something, or maybe that gasket's too thick. If I tighten up the clearance on that, still doesn't want to work. But you can see that the switch is good. Two ohms. Now look at this aftermarket one. Just bought this thing because I thought I needed one. All I did was clean up the contacts there. Um, now look at the brand new one. First of all, you can see it looks quite a bit different. Well, it's going to make a liar out of me, but it failed the test a few times. Let's see. See that? Depressing it right now, it does not want to work. See that? Brand new out of the box. No good. Um, anyway, yeah, another thing we checked for, spun it. No bearing noises or anything like that. You know. Can't really shift the gears right now because the shift forks are out of it right there. But if you want to put it into gear, you can do that, do that, shift it back. Looking at the gears themselves, they're in really good shape on both transmissions. The synchros have nice sharp edges right here. They're probably good, but we are going to rebuild this transmission eventually. And for now, until we get that one right, because I don't want to run it with 33 thousandths on the counter shaft, way out of spec. This one is a 69 transmission. But the problem is that the 70 is when they went to this type of tail housing. 
with the dual bolt patterns, this rear one would be for a Cuda or a Challenger. B body up front. 69 was B body only, obviously. But you see where the mount is? More rearward than this one. So we had to buy this special K member, which is for putting a 69 transmission into a 70 B body. So we'll do that, and we're gonna put this transmission in it for now. And the 440 is right here. Just got that back, freshly honed and new cam bearings all ready to go. So we'll assemble this engine, use that tranny, and get the super beast back on the road, hopefully in a few months. Thanks for watching.